It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, that's G on the ones and twos, and this is the startup life. You know, before we get into today's guest, we have an amazing guest, Startup Startup Nation, for sure. Make sure you go ahead and check us out. You know, we're live streaming right now, so if you have questions or something uh, that you want to, you know, kind of ask us while we're on air, or even during the break or something like that, go ahead and and, and go ahead and watch that stream and stuff like that. But, G, I want to talk to you real quick, man, because I got my uh, Chartable rankings yesterday, Mm -hmm. right, which was pretty cool. And so, for those of you who are not familiar with podcasts and Chartable is a this website where it lets you know where you're charting around the world as far as your podcast and stuff like that. And so, G, apparently in the United States, in the entrepreneurship category, we're ranked number 204, right? So that's not kinda, bad. No, it's not that bad. You know, hey, look, it's a crowded space. It's a crowded <laughs> space, right? Let's just be honest, right? In Germany, we're in the top two, top 200, 164. But get this, in Tanzania, we're number two. In the entrepreneurship category, right? Right there below, you go. yeah, right below Gary V. But you know who we're above? Tim Ferriss, the author of the Four Hour Workweek. <laughs> so any day you can beat Tim Ferriss, right? That's a good day. Yo, I can, I can kind of, uh, uh, I, I, I can understand that that whole thing because for whatever reason, our radio station, when we, when you look at the streaming numbers where people are listening yeah. around the world, we're very popular in South Africa. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Go figure. Behind Listen. behind the United States. I mean, it's not a lot of people that are listening <laughs> right. to us in South Africa, but right. the only other country other than the United States that is really making a dent in our uh, our streaming numbers, it's South For Africa. Sure. For sure. So if you're in South Africa and you're listening right now, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. South you. Africa, Tanzania, <laughs> Germany, and definitely here in the U.S., thank you so much. We definitely appreciate you. You know, we, we always love accolades here at the Startup Life. Yes. And today's guest is not unfamiliar with accolades. He is the founder of ISI Interactive Solutions, a seven-time, get this, a seven-time Inc. 5000 award winner, two of those times Inc. 500 winner, uh, 2001 and 2003, I believe, uh, author of two amazing books that we're going to dive into. He is the one, the man, the myth, the legend, Jay. B. Myers. What's going on, Uncle Jay? Hey, I appreciate being on the show, Dominic, and uh, thank you for that intro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are you ready to pour some knowledge in the Startup Nation today? Absolutely. All right. Let's do it. So first things first, let's start with this. Share with us your origin story. You know, you run up and down the halls of Christian Brothers High School here in Memphis, Tennessee. Kind of share with us a little bit about that. Uh, I'm sure all the folks at Christian Brothers, Brother David appreciates that plug, by the way. No but worries. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a local guy. I mean, I was born in Louisiana, but moved here when I was like nine years old okay. and uh Attended Christian Brothers High School, amongst other schools and everything. Had a great experience out there. Met some uh, terrific people that I'm still friends with to this day, right. you know, 50 years later and stuff. Uh, graduated from, at that point, it was Memphis State University. Gotcha. Uh, now the University of Memphis in, in 1978, high school in 74. And then, you know, basically, Dominic, I, I did like a lot of guys did the, and, and folks uh, in the late 70s. Went to work for corporate uh uh, firms and everything. And my first job was actually out selling printing equipment mm. and it was straight commission. Right. Uh. So I learned the, one of the most important lessons, any of your listeners, all your listeners, you know, y- you have to to own your own business, start your own business and it becomes successful. You have to know how to hustle. Absolutely. You absolutely did. And I learned at a very early age, I was whopping 22, that uh, you had to you know, put out the effort to get the results. I hear that. I hear that. And no matter what you do, everybody's isn't everybody's in the sales game, correct? You know, yeah. they are. And yeah. you know, after I left the printing uh, firm, or the firm <laughs> left me because it went chapter eleven. Fair enough. I had uh, a fortunate experience to work for Eastman Kodak, mm. and a great company. Uh, unfortunately, kind of lost their way in technology uh, several years after I uh, left them and everything. And then I had the other job, worked for Hewlett Packard, and then probably before I started ISI, the most defining moment was when I went to work as a data products manager for a local telecom company that doesn't exist anymore, by the way, gotcha. and got introduced to this technology that was brand new called video conferencing. Mm, and I got so excited about it and thought it made so much sense. And literally being introduced to that technology, here it is almost 30 years later, I can't believe it. It, it changed my life and my career. I mean, both. Absolutely. Absolutely. And for the better. Absolutely. And we're going to definitely dive into that for sure. 
But I want to ask you about you know something else really quickly because you wrote two amazing books that we're going to dive into also as well. But you know, in one of the books, you talk about how you became you're a big baseball fan, massive baseball fan. Uh, you know, I, I know you're a fan of the Yankees. I won't hold that against you as a Red Sox <laughs> fan. Uh, but uh, you were a big fan of the Yankees and a large part of it do that with your dad, Jerry Myers. So kind of talk about your dad a little bit, if you would. Yeah, he uh, ran the Better Business Bureau here for a long time. Right. He was born in Oklahoma. So right. the, the whole connection with Mickey Mantle was that Mickey Mantle and my father grew up about an hour apart. Mm -hmm. uh, my father's a little older than him, but just, you know, I, I've told this story for years. It's like, you know, in my house, you know. Uh, Mickey Mantle was pretty much God. If he wasn't God, he was God's little brother. I hear that. I mean, he was just because, it, you know, he was such a talented guy. And, Absolutely. And my dad, I think, also appreciated that he was flawed, that mm, he knew that he yeah. had some things, you yeah. know, that weren't perfect and all, but that he just admired the talent. And, you know, another thing, too, and it's almost kind of an analogy with small business and entrepreneurship. For sure. Mickey Mantle played a lot of his career hurt. That he did. And you know what? Sometimes in business, you've got to do, you know, you got to plow through things and keep moving and, you know, playing the, the the game of business to to move forward. Absolutely. And just like Mickey Mantle, I think a lot of people root for small businesses in that regard because, you know, it takes a lot of courage to kind of, you know, ride out there on your own and, and try to build something from nothing for sure. So right before we go to break, I want to ask you about, you know, ISI a little bit, you know, kind of talk about, you know, you talked about how, you know, you opened your eyes to telecommunications and stuff like that, teleconferencing, sorry, uh, but kind of talk about the premise of ISI and things of that nature. Well, I, you know, when I started ISI, don't make me out to be a hero here. <laughs> I got fired from the telecom company on my 39th birthday, so that's how we got started. But gotcha. The premise behind ISI was just to really to put focus on video conferencing mm -hmm. as opposed to all this other telecom stuff. Sure. And, you know, grow a market that I thought had potential. And early on when I was with a telecom company, we did a lot of stuff with colleges and universities, but then as ISI... We went way beyond that. We went into corporate. We went into healthcare. We went into a number of other markets and everything and, and had a lot of fun. Uh, it, it was a, a, a ride. It was the mm. hardest thing I've ever done, but it's also the most satisfying thing I've ever done. I hear that. I hear that. So Startup Nation, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about something at ISI that really made a great impact and scale in the company. This is The Startup Life with Dominic Lawson. Startup Nation, we tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681, or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well. DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. This episode of The Startup Life is also brought to you by our amazing partners at SCORE Memphis. Look, entrepreneurship is hard, and there is nothing like a mentor that can help you navigate those waters. And that is what SCORE provides. SCORE mentors provide years of expertise and have resources that will have you flourishing and profitable on your path to entrepreneurship. If you are in need of a mentor, give SCORE a call. The number is 901-544-3588 or go to their website at memphis.score.org. The link is there in the show notes. Startup Nation, Kenda and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stopped by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, we then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when you're entrepreneurs like us, 
That's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick-and-mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids' clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, Start your Target journey with the link in our show notes, where you can expect more and pay less. All right, welcome back to The Startup Life, and we are with seven-time Inc. 5000 Award winner, J.B. Myers, local entrepreneurial Memphis legend. I know he's he's blushing, but I'm just going to... Keep pumping him up because I think he's pretty dope. I think he's pretty dope. So, you know, when we talk about ISI and the teleconference and stuff like that, you were doing amazing uh, work. You you built that company up to $25 million, right, which is just fascinating. But one of the things that I thought was fascinating was how when you introduced telemedicine and how that seemed to be a game changer in the company. Kind of talk about that a little bit, if you would. Yeah, I mean, first off, even though I owned a technology company, I'm not a techie. <laughs> Ask <laughs> gotcha. my wife. I mean, I'm not technical at all, really. But I understand applications. And For I sure. remember early on, we were probably year two of ISI, we had an opportunity to be involved in a pilot project where mm-hmm. we were going to link up Le Bonner Hospital, Children's Hospital, to North Mississippi Medical in Tupelo, about 100 miles away, right. for pediatric cardiology. So, Dominic, you can appreciate as a father, and me too, that when your baby has heart problems, boy, that's... That's really serious. Right. So we linked up the, uh, and made the connection with the, the equipment and everything. And it, this was the early days of telemedicine. So we had the display of the uh, far side on one of them and then the echoes on another and this other monitor. Mm-hmm. The thing that struck me, I'll never forget this, was when I was in Tupelo at the time we made the connection. Right. And saw the look on the parents' faces when they could see the doctor and see the echo and realize, okay, everything's going to be fine, and heard it right from the horse's mouth. Right. Because before that, they used to have to tape, like VHS right. and courier wow. the echo up to, to Le Bonner, and then they're waiting the whole time right. for the results. It was instant. And I just remember the look on their faces, and I said, you know what? I think we got an application that can go someplace. Right. And so, you know, I'm very gratified. And by the way, you know, yes, ISI got to $25 million and, you know, yeah, I was an uh, owner and everything, but... Mm-hmm. A great group of team members and folks on my sales team and support sure. team that made all that happen. Uh, I was just the front man, but I did feel like I guess if I'm going to, you know, give myself a little credit, I recognized that application early on, and then we just grew it. Right. And you consider this area and everything rural southeast. I mean, a lot of people go like, God, "How did you do something like that out of little old Memphis?" And well. You stop and think about it, around little old Memphis are a lot of rural Absolutely. communities that I, need health care. And I was going to ask you about that for sure, because the thing is, it's one thing to build ISI to $25 million in sales, but it's a whole other thing. Because the reason I wanted to ask you about the telemedicine, because it introduces a human element to what you do in the, in the company, what you did in the company, right? Because the thing is, like, there's one thing to grow the company to that scale, but it's a whole other thing to, to make the impact that you were just talking about. Like you said... Memphis is a big city, but a lot of us, I mean, there's a lot of small rural communities around, right? And they depend on Memphis uh, and its medical facilities for that help. Talk about being part of that uh, with ISI in the telemedicine part, because I think that's, that's really important for entrepreneurs to hear. Right. Well, so, you know, early on, I remember uh, getting a contract with the University of Tennessee Health Sciences, mm-hmm. and we put statewide telemedicine in place to do diagnosis or consults for dermatology to uh, cardiology, stroke, uh, you know, psychiatry, all those kind of things, but serving and fulfilling a need. Because in the, in the rural South and, in, and around this area and everything, right. a lot of people just don't like going to the doctor, but right. they don't mind going and sitting in a room with a nurse practitioner and having them remote. And so, you know, and there's a lot of reasons for that. They can't get off work. They're, you know, whatever. Uh, but But the aspect of having the connection immediately to Healthcare support, specialized healthcare in particular, stroke, cardiology, right. all those kind of things, you know, really made a difference. And I'll tell you a quick story. Sure. Uh, when we put a lot of equipment, a uh, huge contract over in Arkansas, we put about 500 systems over there one year. We had a guy that was, went into his office with stroke like symptom and was imminently going to have a stroke. They got him to a telemedicine site. 
got connected to the, uh, the physician and get him. I think it's a TPA drug or whatever the okay. beta blocker had him on that. He went, uh, he was fine the next day and went to wipe back to work the day after that. He went from a life threatening situation, Dominic, to, you know, getting it worked out because, right. of, and that gives me a whole lot more, uh, you know, gratification. Yeah. The money was great in the telemedicine, right, of course. but you know, the, the, the legacy, the whole thing about having technology, in place to improve people's lives. That meant a whole lot more to me than anything else. For sure. You know, and, and I'm glad you pointed that out because I created an episode on the startup life called It's Time to Stop Being Selfish. And so I illustrated that sometimes the world is sometimes it's not just about numbers and making money and stuff like that. Sometimes the idea that you have is like saving somebody's life. It's providing somebody some type of value that you really can't put a number on. And so when I think about the telemedicine part, you know, had you not saw that application, right, for, you know, uh, for the telemedicine and how the impact it could have made, true enough, it made a lot of money, but it also impacted people's lives. And I think that's important to point out, Startup Nation, because your idea could really be the idea that not just, you know, save somebody's life, improve somebody's life, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm grateful for you pointing that out and that you shared that. With Absolutely. Me for sure. For sure. So you wrote two amazing books. You know, and I want to ask about, you know, the one you wrote in 2014, Hitting the Curveballs, How Crisis Can Strengthen the strengthen and Grow Your Business. And so, uh, amazing book, by the way. Thank you You, you so definitely much. have a knack for storytelling. You're very I, want, kind. I want to talk about that a little <laughs> bit off air a little bit. But I want to ask you this, because you start off the book with, you know, it's 2007, The Summer from Hell. Kind of share with us uh, about that a little bit. Well, it was a very difficult summer, and for, for sure. all the small business owners out there, entrepreneurs, I mean, you know, one of the th tips I'll give you before I talk about the story is you got to expect the unexpected. For sure. Because it, it's it's just going to happen. So um, the summer just, it, it was one of those kind of weird feelings I had. We had been kind of almost plateauing a little bit in the business. We were kind of flatlining yeah. on sales, we're, and, I, and I recognized some uneasiness with uh, my employees. And then literally in 30 days... I'll say it again, in right. a, a month, mm -hmm. 30 days, I had one, two, three, four of my uh, team members on my sales team leave the company, 80% right. of my uh, right. prior year's revenue. And everybody, you know, when they hear this, they're going to go, God, he must be a terrible boss. He's a mean guy. <laughs> it really didn't have anything to do with that. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not, but it was more about them. One guy said, I was inspired by you getting your business going. I want to start my own thing. Another guy went to work for a supplier, customer, et cetera. So- Legitimate reasons. Right. But in that same period of time, in those 30 days, uh, we had a technician of ours go in the hospital here in Memphis for a liver transplant and never came out. Mm. Had a good friend go to Gulf Shores, never came back. Right. Saturday, Saturday funerals. Right. It was just, it was gut-wrenching. I mean, my heart's Imagine. breaking and I'm trying to console my employees and everything. And then my wife ran into a very major health care uh, crisis right. that we had to deal with. Right. So. You know, you don't look for all that stuff to happen at once, and it was very hard. I, I'd love to tell you some heroic story that I fought my way through and everything. I struggled. And in fact, I mean, I tell a story in the book about the fact that I was afraid to, to turn the lights off in my bedroom, and you're going to go like to leave them on. Well, why is that? I was afraid of what the next day was going to look like. Absolutely. The world had gone dark on me, Dominic, right. and it was just like, for entrepreneurs, we, we like to control our destinies and all these kind of things. I felt like... These events, I felt so totally out of control. I hear that. It, it was hard. It was, in writing that, I will tell you, I, I, I remember my hands shaking while I was trying to type. It was tough. Right. I, I, I can kind of see the emotion coming from it now because that can't be, that can't be easy because, you know, on our path of entrepreneurship, we're, we're fo so focused on worried about like the numbers and keeping the lights on and having payroll and stuff like that. Then there's the stuff that's outside of that that can just compounds it and just makes it very difficult. So, I mean, you know, that's crazy. That's really crazy. You know, all of that in the span of 30 days. And then, you know, later on, you talk about in the book about a certain situation that all started from reading an article in Inc. Magazine. <laughs> kind of share with that a little bit. Yeah, that's an older story. It yeah, actually, for sure. Uh, it, it had happened uh, way back in 2003. But yeah. basically, you know, we had this recognition from Inc. Magazine, yeah. which, by the way, for your listeners, that is a terrific... You know, to be involved with Inc. and be on their list, it's like the Super Bowl for, for small right. business owners and everything. But in any event, I read this article in the spring of uh, 2003 um, that it was uh, titled A Thief uh, Within. It was talking about a couple of 
brothers that had a business outside of Chicago that somebody had stolen, their accounting manager stolen over $200,000 from them. Mm -hmm. Credit card schemes, some other, uh, I believe, forgeries as well. And so I just remember thinking, golly, you know, man, uh, I wonder if that could happen in my business. And I just kind of restless night, uh, April the 28th, 2003. Right. And the next day I'm in the office and we're doing some kind of training on some new software. And it just out of nowhere, it was almost like divine intervention. It just hit me. You know, that, how could that happen in my business? Oh, I haven't checked the payroll records. Mm -hmm. And to, to digress, I hadn't checked the payroll records because 10 months before that, my, uh, Older brother dropped dead out of nowhere. So right. I, I was devastated, still am. And, right. and it was one of those things that I took my eye off the ball, Dominic. I'd love to tell you some other excuse, but that was it. I took my eye off the ball. And anyway, um, I had uh, that day, I had the uh, our receptionist bring in the payroll records because I hadn't checked them in a while. Right. And uh, I started thumbing through the pages and I about got sick to my stomach. It was like, the accounting manager had a $5,000 bonus one month, a $10,000. And I just kept flipping through it and adding them up as over $40,000. Mm. I'm freaking out. We called the Germantown police. You know, we're trying to figure out what, even the receptionist had a, a commission bonus or something crazy, but gotcha. whatever thousands of dollars. Right. So logically, you know, it's like a crime. Get the local police. Wrong move on my part. I gotcha. found out later. Yeah. Any event, we had a forensic accountant come in certified fraud examiner, he looked at the payroll thing and he said, man, I hate this for you, but this is not the end of the story. He goes back into our computer system, or our QuickBooks and everything, and finds another $210,000 of suspicious checks right. that end up being forged wow. by our accounting manager. That's, that's, that's crazy. And that story is really highlighted in your first book, Correct. Keep Swinging, mm -hmm. an entrepreneur's story of overcoming adversity and achieving small business success. In Startup Nation, you can get both of those books on Amazon.com. And if you listen to the replay on the podcast, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access. But we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. But when we come back, I want to ask you about, you know, a few other things like, you know, Inc. 5000 and stuff like that. You are listening to The Startup Life with Dominic Lawson. Startup Nation, we tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681, or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well. DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. This episode of The Startup Life is also brought to you by our amazing partners at SCORE Memphis. Look, entrepreneurship is hard, and there is nothing like a mentor that can help you navigate those waters. And that is what SCORE provides. SCORE mentors provide years of expertise and have resources that will have you flourishing and profitable on your path to entrepreneurship. If you are in need of a mentor, give SCORE a call. The number is 901-544-3588 or go to their website at memphis.score.org. The link is there in the show notes. Startup Nation, Kenda and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stopped by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, we then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when you're entrepreneurs like us, 
That's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick-and-mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids' clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, start your Target journey with the link in our show notes where you can expect more and pay less. Welcome back to The Startup Life with our, my guest, uh, J.B. Myers. Now, I wanted to ask you this because we were talking off air a little bit about how you're the executive residence at the University of Memphis. We both are, you know, alum there and stuff like that. Um, talk about, you know, your role there, but also talk about this motivation that you have because I see a lot of times entrepreneurs who are wildly successful right and they always want to come back and like give like those nuggets give those tools whether it be write a book start a podcast or doing what you're doing so talk about your role at the university of memphis and talk about where that motivation comes from to give back well sure i mean i'm a proud graduate i mean i and i've been involved with the fogelman college uh, in the business school for a number of years coming sure. back basically to speak to classes in many cases and then this role of executive and residence sort of uh, appeared a few years ago and very gratified by it. I, uh, you and I were kidding about it. You know, that I, I do have an office, right. which is really exciting for a guy that uh, made C's and a 2.34 GPA. <laughs> Funny how that works. It's hilarious and everything. <laughs> I, I do have, as anybody at the U of M will appreciate, the, the gold, which is the parking pass. I have that as well. And as I laughingly tell the CFO at the University of Memphis, you know, the one thing I don't have is a paycheck. <laughs> but the, the truth of the matter is it, that's all good fun. Right, I, right. I really enjoy it. I teach a Toastmaster class. Okay. Um, with, they call it the persuasive presenter. But sure. the whole point of it is through Dr. Kathy Tuberville and her uh, team, we basically te- are teaching, you know, b- business skills that almost as an overlay to their, their sure. degree – to give them that edge, to get that job, and to be successful when they graduate. Mm -hmm. And so that you learn about public uh, speaking, which is important for any business person to be uh, on a successful track. And then there's other things as well, like even simple things, Dominic, like etiquette. Like when you go to a business dinner or lunch, you know, where do you put your napkin and the forks and all these kind of things? And then, you know, there's several other things about communications, critical thinking, and some other classes that are involved with they call it the complete professional program. And actually, when the students g- are certified and graduate from that, they actually get a, a, a separate stole than the regular ones right. uh, from the university. It's right. a white one. It's very – so it, it, it's, it's a big deal. And, cool. and the students, uh, I, gosh, I tell you, through the years, I've gotten some terrific emails. Quick story. Sure. I, I walked out of the Fogelman one day. They had the internship fair going there, which is like – 75, 80 companies in the lobby of the Fogelman building, all these students there, hundreds of people. Walked towards the parking uh, garage, and a student that was in my persuasive presenter class in the spring of the previous year comes up to me, and he said, you know, Mr. Myers, I so much appreciate you teaching that class. And he Mm -hmm. said, based on what I learned, he said, I now have the confidence to walk in there and ask for an internship. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Man, that that just really felt right, right and everything. So I, I love doing it. I think the students, they energize me, and uh, it, it's been a good uh, situation for me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So, you know, we said earlier that, you know, you have a very unique distinction here uh, at the Startup Life because be- <coughs> before we had Todd Palmer, uh, and he was a six-time Inc. 5000 Award winner. So now with you being the seven-time, you know, you kind of hold the distinction as, you know, uh, doing it more times than anybody else who's been on the show, which is, you know, very amazing, by the way. But I want to ask you about this, even with all the accolades and you got a you know, accolade from your book from Inc. Magazine, from the top CEO reads or something like that. Um, talk about how because we see people who get accolades and stuff like that all the time and they have this sense of I've arrived. But you talk about in your book, Hitting the Curveballs, that there's still work to be done. Right. Because you even talked about one of the years that you made it, that the number one company, it's not even around anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. So talk about that, that constant push to always get better in your company, always to look for new markets, new avenues to scale and grow. Yeah. And I appreciate the accolades about the Inc. Uh, recognition. I mean, don't get too impressed. I mean, I think what was happening in those days, yeah, a couple of years when we made the Inc. 500, it was 
just good old fashioned hard work and everything right. to put it together. The other times, frankly, it was because we were still growing a little tiny bit during the recession. Gotcha. And, I, and where other people were falling apart. Right. I think the recognition for small business is so important. You have to have goals for your people. And it can't just be, let's go make a bunch of money or for sure, whatever. For sure. And so even early on, I remember in 2001, we uh, won the Small Business of the Year Award through the uh, Business Journal. Right. Year. And the MBJ has always been very supportive. So, you know, that was something I just, I kept trying to motivate my team by putting goals out there that I thought were worthy. I can tell you in, in the case of the uh, MBJ award, that was great. But boy, that Inc. award was just something. When you're out there right. with hundreds of other people it's from amazing. around the country, right. and they have this big conference and everything, they do the award ceremony, you know, you feel like you're at the Super Bowl. You feel right. like you've just really, and, and it's, it's a great feeling. And it's uh, a wonderful magazine. I, I consider it the small business Bible uh, for that. entrepreneurs and everything. So, um, but you, I, I do, you know, I think it's very important to to look at a business. And if you don't set goals, how are you going to ever achieve anything? I hear that. If you're just out there aimlessly, you got to, <laughs> and, and we, we didn't really go out, oh, let's make it seven times in the list. We just kept plugging away and we would apply because we kind of knew the, you know, the formula and everything sure. and it worked out. I hear that. I hear that. Quick follow-up question. Because in the book, Hitting the Curveballs, you talk about how, you know, um, you wanted to, you know, there was a recession coming around the park and stuff like that. And there have been fears here uh, coming up soon that we may be coming around with one soon. But you talk about in the book that like, you know what, we're just not going to participate in it. <laughs> like, I'm just like, we're we not doing that. Right. Which I thought was like a, an amazing mindset to have because. There were many people in 2007, 2008, 2009 thought the, the sky was falling, right? And you just decided, like, you know, we're not going to participate that. Talk about that. But also, you also did something different, you know, something unique with your clients that offer even more value than just the service that you were providing. So kind of talk about that, if you would. Well, I think it was a common reaction during the recession to panic. Yeah. And, you know, we I was scared uh, like right. everybody else. Right. I mean, I'm not going to be like some superhero here, but... <laughs> I believe that, I, you know, we had to stick to what we were good at. For sure. We had to plow through it. And I just had this thing in my head that, you know, I was listening to all the stuff about the financial people, the banks and the whatever falling apart and everything and closing up. And I said, you know, that's not us. I hear that. We sell technology that improves people's lives and, and, and makes them more productive. We're not in the banking business. We're not in those other businesses. It's hard, but we can make it through it. Right. And once we make it through it, we're going to distinguish ourselves from a lot of other businesses. So I kept putting it out there, almost a goal, let's succeed despite all this. Mm -hmm. And then annoyingly, I'd walk through the halls of the office and everything and say, we're choosing not to participate in the recession. <laughs> they got tired of hearing that. But it got you. once it kind of became a mindset, it, it was pretty powerful. I hear that. And uh, we feel really good about that. You know, it's one thing to grow businesses when times are good. Mm hmm but when you consider in 2007, that crazy year we had in the summer and all, we did about $11 million that year. And then four years later to do over $25 million wow. in 2011 was astounding. And not just the numbers, it's who did the numbers? How did that happen? Right. We hired millennials. And that's mm -hmm. another part of the story. Right. That, you know, you sit around and hear people bash millennials all the time. I don't know anything about that, man. <laughs> All I know is that they grew my business from 11 to $25 million in the worst economy in 80 years. That's what I know. Everybody else can have their own opinions. I got mine, and I think they're great. Hashtag millennial power. There you go. Yeah, I hear that for sure. So I, I want to ask you this, because like once again, real quick, because you talked about you adding value to your clients right. because you, you added you know, uh, your book. You were giving them Keep Swinging. That's right. With, with, talk about that, because I think it's important when in a recession that you know, there's, it's not necessarily the sky is falling, but there's room for opportunity. And you saw that opportunity by offering more value. Talk about that a little bit. If yeah, you I mean, the book was just a small gesture, but I just yeah. was thinking, well, you know, I've got a book out there. And I mean, how many people are going to go in a bookstore and buy it right. or even on Amazon? <laughs> so I, I wanted to leverage the book and kind of make it as our hook Yeah, to stay in contact with the customers, to show we cared. Thank you for your business. And then I think when you read Keep Swinging, I, I, I hope and believe and I've gotten feedback that you know, the readers saw a lot of value, kind of inspiration and in things. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't some kind of self-serving, we're the greatest. We went through a lot of struggles. And I think it reinforced relationships with many customers. And we got new respect from prospects and people out there that we mail the book to. 
it was astounding. I mean, the reaction I've got, I still hold on to these emails all these years later, and it's just so humbling and everything to to write a book and then have, you never know what's going to happen. Are people going to read it? Are they going to get any value out right. of it? And it was tremendous value that ended up, Dominic, translating from them liking the book to, I don't know whether the book caused it or not, but I think it had something to do with the fact the business was growing and they saw us as offering value outside of just this hardware Absolutely. we're putting in there. And I think they saw that as a, uh, you know, uh, kind of a look into the character of the company. And, and I think that's what really differentiated those who kind of kept their doors open as opposed to some who maybe were not so fortunate. So I appreciate all of that. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Jay's very significant move that he just recently made in his entrepreneurial career. It's very interesting. You are listening to The Startup Life. Startup Nation, we tell you all the time that no one does anything great on their own. That includes starting a business or a nonprofit or even becoming a thought leader or an influencer. My point is that you need a team to do it successfully and responsibly. And that is why you should contact DR and Associates. Danielle and her team provide branding solutions along with digital and social media marketing that provide tangible results you are looking for. No matter if you are a Fortune 500 company or an author looking to make an impact, DR and Associates needs to be part of your team. They are one of the few firms whose leadership has been recognized by Google, which is proof of concept that they are very good at what they do. Contact DR and Associates today to grow your online presence. The number is 615-933-3681, or you can visit their website at drandassociates.com. Also, make sure you follow their Facebook page as well. DR and Associates, providing real clients with real results. This episode of The Startup Life is also brought to you by our amazing partners at SCORE Memphis. Look, entrepreneurship is hard, and there is nothing like a mentor that can help you navigate those waters. And that is what SCORE provides. SCORE mentors provide years of expertise and have resources that will have you flourishing and profitable on your path to entrepreneurship. If you are in need of a mentor, give SCORE a call. The number is 901 901- 544-3588 or go to their website at memphis.score.org. The link is there in the show notes. Startup Nation, Kid and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stop by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, We then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when you're entrepreneurs like us... That's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick-and-mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids' clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, Start your Target journey with the link in our show notes, where you can expect more and pay less. Welcome back to the Startup Life. We are wrapping up with the one and only Jay Myers. So, Jay, you know, just recently, as a matter of fact, when I called you, you were at a lunch. I was interrupting a very important lunch because you just recently sold ISI. So, you know, kind of talk about that emotion because, you know, not only was it just for you, but like, you know, you talked about the embezzlement. You talked about all the other stuff during 2007. The people that you built, the team, they were in the trenches with you. Uh, No no doubt about it. I mean, and the success of ISI is not just me, me, me. For sure. The the, the team I had uh, there was just the best, the best. And, you know, it it was a very emotional thing to Mm -hmm. even consider selling the business. And in fact... I had blown off a lot of uh, potential offers through the years, but this one from came in from the largest, uh, by far, largest company in our industry, and it was like, hmm, that's not just anybody. Right. Very arduous process. I'm actually writing a third book about that, Dominic, right. and that, and a lot of other things there. So it's it's exciting to uh, to to you know to be putting a book together, but it's also kind of just 
you know, emotional. Um, I mean, you got to appreciate that. I'm not going to bore you with all the ins and outs, but right. due diligence when you're going through that process with somebody that's trying to acquire your business is a bear. I mean, it's an absolute, it's mind numbing, all the stuff you have to do while you're still running your own business. Right. Then, right? But here was, uh, to add to the emotion. Right. So uh, it was in 2018, we sold the business. On mm-hmm. October 27th of 2018, my baby girl, my one and only daughter, I walked her down the aisle in Savannah, Georgia. Wow. Four days wow. later, I'm sitting in my office in Memphis and signing off and, and, and letting my other baby go um, by virtue of the business being sold. So it was an emotional four days. I imagine. Still feeling some effects of that, you know, for sure. Um, because the, the interesting thing, as I was telling you earlier, Dominic, mm-hmm. I didn't start the business to make a bunch of money. I did it to the pride of building something out of nothing. And obviously it meant a lot to me through the, you know, writing two books about my business. This is not just any kind of business story. Right. This is personal. Absolutely. And, you know, to, to take that whole journey was, you know, you know, it was, uh, it was emotional, it was painful at times, but I had to look at what was best for the business and not what was best for me. Best that. for me. Maybe I just hang around and keep doing it for five or 10 years. And not, you know, not ripple in the water kind of thing. But I thought what was best for the business was have this company acquire us that could help us grow. And in fact, since that's happened, we've opened up a new office in Nashville, mm-hmm. got a state contract. So it's it's all good it's, right. uh, from that aspect of it. But we had, you can well imagine, some turnover after I sold it. People weren't too excited about working for a big company and all those kind of things. And, you know, I, I thought you would ask that. And I just want to echo this point. That's why I love for you to have, I'd love for you to be on the show today because there are times where we can't just think about ourselves. We have to think about what's best for the business, even if that means not necessarily sacrificing yourself, but to be, you know what, I'm going to get out of the way because this is what's best for ISI. And so that's one of the things I I deeply, deeply admire about you, Jay. I appreciate that. I appreciate that for sure. So, you know, we're, we're, we're moving on. We're going to do some new things. You know, we, we got a new venture, JBM Enterprises, doing some speaking and consulting. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I'm excited about it. I yeah. mean, I, I, people talk about when you sell your business, you retire, and it's like, I'm way too hyper to retire. <laughs> uh, it's just not in the cards. Got gotcha. you. So set up an office in Collierville off the town square, yeah. JBM Enterprises, uh, you know, set it up to basically... You know, kind of do what, put a label on what I've been doing for the last several years with public speaking and, as I can, some small business consulting. Gotcha. I'm excited about that and just where that may lead my uh, career to. And I'm very focused on the second half of my career being even better than the first half. I hear that. I hear that. I got to put you on the spot a little bit because once one of the things I was, I've been saying that you have a knack for storytelling. <laughs> have you ever thought about doing a podcast? I've thought about it, and you know, you, you never know; it might happen in the future. But I do, okay. I, I do enjoy. I mean, you know, with these books, Dominic. I mean, I didn't major in journalism at the University of <laughs> Memphis, Fogelman. You know, you and I, right. same place. And then, so it was more of a case of once I kind of got into telling the stories, it just, you know, I had people email me saying it's so much more fun, right? Because you're relating to something personal as opposed sure. to some you know textbook kind of thing. So enjoyed that, and it's just. It's been a heck of a, uh, a ride to do that as well. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. So I want to talk a little baseball, just a little bit, because I know recently, uh, I know they announced that uh, the White Sox and the Yankees are going to play in the field of dreams. And I know, and I, I can just see you now, the way you're like getting excited about it. And I know you're trying to get tickets for it. So what would that mean to you to go to that game? Oh, man, it would mean everything. I've been to Yankee Stadium, the old one. Uh, the new one. I actually played a game in right. the old stadium. Right. I think you know that yeah. by virtue of the book. But I mean, I love Field of Dreams movie. And when they <laughs> said that they're going to play in that cornfield, I'm like, I'm so there. Uh, it's a hard ticket to get a hold of. We're still working I on it. I, I'm not uh, 100% confident that's going to happen, but <laughs> you never know. So I we're, we're open. And, uh, you know, they, I love the part where they say, you know, is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. Right. Uh, today in particular, that's an interesting uh, Right, comment, yeah, right? let's not even go there. <laughs> right. For sure. But thank you for sharing that. I want to ask you this because, you know, I, I love Major League Baseball. I really do. Uh, but I don't know, and maybe it's just me, right? But I, I feel like, you know, when you have like the stars of like Mike Trout and all the other up and coming stars like that. Do you think Major League Baseball does a great job of marketing those stars? Because I feel like if I if Mike Trout walked in here right now, I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. So if you were in charge of marketing, 
for Major League Baseball? What would you do? What would you change? What would you kind of implement? In your, in your respect. Well, I think they market the, the you know, the big stars quite a bit. I, okay. I, I'm more of a fan of marketing the team. The team, I mean, okay. the whole team okay. and everything. You know, you look at the Yankees and they, you know, Aaron Judge is, you know, kind of the, uh, right. the front man, but there's a lot of good players in that team that mm-hmm. deserve some attention as well. Right. I think Major League Baseball has done a pretty good job of uh, putting things out there and everything. I enjoy the MLB network and Oh yeah, um, and you know, and then I personally, my favorite thing to do is uh, the spring training games, which I'm right. gonna do next month. Gotcha. I mean, that, because it's very laid back. Yeah, you know, you get autographs and stuff, and it's just kind of baseball in its simplest form. You're not in these fifty, sixty thousand seat stadiums and everything. You're in something that maybe is ten. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Yankees play on Steinbrenner Field in Tampa, and I've played on that field a number of times, so right. it's really cool to go back and go like, hey, I was there around the dugout, and I did this, and that. that's on deck circle and all, so it, it's, it's, you know, it's fun. I mean, I was never a great player, you know, I didn't play in college or anything like that, I I think I peaked in junior high and everything, but just always, you know, love the game, love the uh, the pace of it, and just the, you know, just the way it's all uh, put together, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you know, you can you, watching a baseball game get your mind off your troubles for several hours. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. Real quick, you know, before we move on, because I want to ask you this, because there's there's always you know been a divide about Pete Rose, and it seems like it's generational. Like, should should he be in the Hall of Fame? Should he not be in the Hall of Fame? What, what's your opinion on that, Jay? Yeah. Well, first off, I mean, anybody listening to uh, the show and everything, I you have to acknowledge he was a terrific player, one of the best of all time. Right. There's no question about that, and. Charlie Hustle and all those things. I think that he made a mistake. Right. And I think if he had fessed up to it early on, right. I think he'd be in the Hall of Fame. I think the reason why he's so not too. is that he just was so combative and denied it for so long. You know, he, he right. undid himself there. I think that, uh, you know, if he looked back on it, he said, oh, maybe I just shouldn't have fought him uh, so hard. Just say, hey, I'm human. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. You know, I, I think... You know, I think people are willing to give somebody, you know, the second chance or another, you know, right. look at the thing. But he, he just didn't do a good job of that at all. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. And so before we wrap up, you know, the show for today, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the Start I really Life. appreciate being on it, No worries. No worries. You gave amazing value. And once again, make sure you go to Amazon.com. Link is in the show notes for easy access if you're listening to the podcast replay. Hitting the curveballs, how, how crisis can strengthen and grow your business. And also keep swinging. Uh, which is an amazing book, by the way. It reads like a John Grisham novel. Like I said, <laughs> it really does. Uh, an entrepreneur's story of overcoming adversity and achieving small business success. So right now, I'm actually going to turn the microphone over to you because there's a small business owner out there. They're feeling stuck, Jay. They're feeling stuck or they're afraid to even start. Give him some words of motivation to uh, kind of uh, take his own out today. Well, I think that, you know, if you have an idea for a business, do your homework and build a business plan. Spend the time to build the plan. And uh, it always takes more money than you think it's going to take to get it off the ground. Put your head down, work hard. And, you know, but, but for a small business, find a niche that, that. that the rest of the people are not doing that you can do and distinguish yourself that way. That's what, what happened with us. We were very lucky. But um, anyway, can I make a quick plug on something? So yeah, sure. keep swinging that you mentioned you're very kind about. Sure. I uh, just want to let the audience uh, and the listeners know that we're getting ready to release in the next few months the audio version of this book, even nice. though it's 12 years old. And because you mentioned something about it being a John Grisham uh, kind of novel, yeah. I think it's going to be a real fun uh, listen. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. And that's going to wrap up our time on the Startup Life uh, uh, show today. I really appreciate your time today, for sure, Jay, for sure. You'll be willing to come back to talk about that next book? Absolutely, Dominic. I appreciate that. Awesome stuff. And as always, Startup Nation, if you have an idea, be about that life, the Startup Life. <laughs>